So the next talk following the, the CRISP uh, uh, studies is by Eurini Papa Petru, and she's going to tell us about the synthetic lethality of uh, CRISP uh, screening. Well, thank you. Hello, everybody. Um, so my uh, lab is using and is, um, has developed a unique approach to uh, study blood cancers, in particular myeloid malignancies, uh, combining stem cell and gene editing technologies. So we're using reprogramming to pluripotency to derive induced pluripotent stem cells, or iPSCs, from patients with blood uh, cancers, myeloid malignancies, uh, starting with cells from the bone uh, marrow or the blood. Um, that typically contains both cancer and normal cells. And so we're deriving these iPS cell lines that we now, um, uh, once we make them there forever, uh, but unlike um, conventional cell lines, they are more physiologically relevant and we can, um, and, and they're maintained in um, immortal by pluripotency as opposed to strong oncogenes. And we can differentiate them into blood cells to, to study their phenotypes. In parallel, we're using CRISPR uh, gene editing to either correct or introduce specific mutations in uh, respectively um, mutant or normal APSCs, thereby uh, generating perfectly isogenic conditions um, that are ideal to, to ask questions about what the effects of specific point mutations are in cells that only differ um, uh, in their genome by one uh, specific point mutation. And we um, uh, use this system in the lab to study uh, and to ask uh, uh, many interesting questions in uh, uh, cancer biology and precision oncology, both more basic and um, uh, some more translational. Uh, a major theme in the lab is using these models to study a um, class of mutations in a major blood cancer that's called myelodysplastic syndrome. And these mutations are uh, mutations in um, genes that are uh, collectively called splicing factor genes. Um, they are uh, RNA binding proteins, and the three main ones are shown here as SRCF2, SF3B1, and U2F1. And these are hotspot mutations. We didn't know anything about them until very recently. About seven years ago, these were found through cancer uh, genome. Um, um, uh, you know, large-scale efforts of sequencing of cancer genomes. Um, and we now know that these are probably the most important uh, class of mutations in this, uh, in this blood cancer. They, more than half of the patients have them. They're very typical of this cancer, very uh, infrequently found in other cancers. They're early events. And uh, unfortunately, current models are not very good in, in uh, uh, helping us understand what these mutations do, which right now is pretty, um, still remains uh, largely unknown. Um, there are no conventional cell lines uh, that have these mutations in, um, uh, in an endogenous setting, and mouse models are not that great for to study splicing effects because of um, a limited conservation of uh, alternative splicing. Um, so to try to overcome this, we developed in the lab using CRISPR-Cas9 and I IPSC lines. We developed a panel of um, IPSC lines with these um, the, the three main splicing factor mutations introduced by CRISPR gene editing and also tagged with um, uh, flag epitopes. And we're using them uh, for a number of studies to try to understand the functional consequences. But today, since the uh, theme of the uh, session is functional screens, I'm going to discuss this uh, last um, uh, here in the list, uh, how we use this for synthetic lethality CRISPR knockout screens. And so the idea behind this is um, uh, uh, quite simple. We're using a dropout screen design uh, whereby we um, transduce a library of guide RNAs that uh, target a set of kinase genes that we obtained actually from Brian Brown's lab with the help of uh, all of the previous speaker here. Um, and this library, so we transduce this library to um, each of these uh, mutant and normal IPC clones. Um, and over time in culture, we uh, use next generation sequencing to ask what is the abundance of each guide RNA in uh, uh, the uh, end uh, of the culture compared to the beginning of the culture. And by doing this, is this correct this time? I thought that, oh, wow, really? Okay, so, um, huh. Uh, are you sure? Because I think the, the green had started before I started. Anyway, I'm, I'm wasting more time. But and, and the idea is that um, in, in, we're comparing, uh, we're trying to find guide RNAs that are specifically depleted in the mutant cells as opposed to the normal cells um, as a way of, uh, of, of uh, uncovering synthetically lethal interactions. Um, and so these are some um, 
uh, quality control experiments that we first want to do to show that our guard, the distribution of our guard RNAs in the cells corresponds to that of the library, that uh, we don't introduce any um, technical problems with our um, uh, the, during DNA preparation, PCR amplification, and next generation sequencing. And um, by calculating the CRISPR score, so looking at the abundance of each guide RNA in the beginning uh, compared to the, um, uh, to the end of the culture, uh, we want to see this uh, tail of uh, depleted uh, superhumanly essential um, gu uh, guides uh, that, and, and while the rest of the guides, um, uh, we expect them to be largely unaffected, so in this kind of uh, sort of uh, almost flat line. And uh, looking at, oops, um, uh, the results of that we have obtained so far by screening uh, uh, three individual clones of each of the mutant lines and three uh, isogenic normal. Um, in the heat map to the left, we have done the analysis of normalized CRISPR uh, scores. And what we're looking for is um, guides that target the kinases are here um, that are have low scores in most of these uh, mutant lines, but not in the normal ones. These are the would appear here in the top. Um, in this analysis shown to the right, uh, which is um, a little bit um, different, we ask how many of the guides that target the same clone are depleted. So this analysis puts uh, a little bit less faith in, in the fact that all guides will be equally effective. Um, and in this case, we're looking for guides that will, that for kinases that will cluster um, down below. So we're in the process now of um, having some first hits to test um, individually in, um, by individual genetic knockout, also um, a, with small molecule inhibitors whenever these are available. Um, and we uh, ultimately want to uh, use these uh, results to uncover inter some interesting biology and also to uh, uh, primarily develop, um, uh, uncover new therapeutic targets that can help us to develop new drugs that we can test either uh, individually or in combination with splicing modulator drugs that are now entering clinical trials in these um, uh, uh, diseases. Okay, I guess I'm done. Thank you very much.